Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Every time I do this video, I'm cycling this. Let's play Train Simulator. Uh, let's go ahead and do the Inner Circle service today. Again, I want to, I appreciate, again, everyone who's been uh, tuning into this series, and I really do uh, appreciate having you with me on board. Uh, very interesting route, and I'm happy to be able to show it off to you. So let's go ahead and get this Inner Circle service started. We're going to see what the Inner Circle service looks like, at least on this particular run. Let's get started, shall we? Good afternoon. Today, your train will form Service 11 on the Inner Circle. Prepare your train and drive in manual mode to depot line. Well, we know how this works. We don't need to read all that again. We know how that works. So let's go ahead and get ourselves going, and we're going to start at Ibrox before opening the passenger doors. Make sure the whole train's in the platform, of course. So this is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be running in a different location today. Let's have some fun with this. So, step one, reverser. Oh, let's put this up. Step one, reverser. We're going to go ahead and bring the brakes down to zero because we're ready to go as soon as we're allowed to. Let's turn on the saloon lights. Let's turn off the parking brake. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all she wrote. Get to put on a minimal headlight setting right now in the yard. We're limited to 18 kilometers per hour. The train will do this automatically. We don't have to move the throttle off. I just do it as a course of principle because any other train you have to. But you can leave the throttle. In fact, I'll just show you. If you leave the throttle on shunt, you're not going to gain any more speed. The train's literally not going to let you. Nothing you can do. You just, this is just your fate. You are fated. You cannot gain speed. Period. But I want to come to a stop anyway shortly, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. You can see, like the other snare, we have a timetable. Let's see uh, if we can keep to this timetable today, shall we? And you can see the door keeps sliding up in the middle. That door, like you may remember from the tutorial, does open. I did not want to hit the brakes that much yet, just a small brake application. Now we're going to increase it. Decreasing it again. We're at the two car stop, so we're going to keep going now. I'm not, I'm going a little too slowly now, so let's try that again. Now we're going to come to a full stop, change cabs. So we're going to turn the parking brake back on. That is back on. Let's put the uh, throttle into a, or the reverse to rather, into an off setting. There we go. And we're going to change, uh, did I forget something? Headlights, off. There we go. So off to the other cab. There we are. Headlights on. Now we're going to put them on full. We're going to take the parking brake off. Well done. Now move to the rear. Yeah, we know. Oops, off. And we're going to go ahead and put the reverser into a manual setting. We're going to take the brakes off. We're going to shunt up. And we're going to head to Ibrox. been uh, shunted over as you may have noticed to the correct track so the track split we're now taking the track on the right underground because now we're gonna go to the right instead of to the left first time doing that so let's start hitting the brakes here actually the train did it for me I don't have to anymore <laughs> the train will break for you ladies and gentlemen that's all you need to know about this train it will break for you it will manage your speed even when you're not paying attention it literally will do that. It is actually funny to think that uh, this train is designed for people who aren't familiar with driving trains. You see once again the stops are worth 58 points. That sounds lovely. So we're going to be entering a 55 momentarily. Watch for that yellow light above the train brake to disappear. That's going to be a sign we're moving to a 55 area. We're now on the inner circle because we have to get our way over on this track. So now we are locked inside. We must do the circle. We have a green signal, thankfully. A rare signal in the middle of the route. 
Oh, we can go 55 now. I should have done that a little earlier. I think we're getting limited to 35, so I'm going to lower just to be safe, because we are manual right now. I have a feeling I'm going to be pushing this to not be on time right now, aren't I? Oh, we can put a little dim light on. There we go. So make sure the lights are on. Yes, they are. I'm cutting that a little close. Doors are open. And our service is about to begin as passengers are soon going to be boarding our train. Let's uh, take a peek outside. Sir. Sir. Ma'am. Um, couple. You're uh, Clearly you're a couple. No. Are you getting on the train? There's no one on the train. Are you... The train... You, sir. Sir. Hi. The train is... Your chariot awaits, sir. You're... I'm in the ground. Your chariot awaits, sir. Are you gonna... Your chariot... Never mind. Oh, I'm back in the uh, cab. Let's go back to the front. We're gonna set up auto mode now. That is now done. We're gonna move the throttle to a parallel setting. We're gonna get ready to push N once again. We now have an auto drive permit. Yes, we know this. We're gonna skip this text this time. And we're gonna push the auto stop button right there. And let our customers know where we're going. There they are. They just didn't want to board until they absolutely had until the absolute last second. But they did board because they know where they're going. So our arrival time is due for 13.07.09. Cessnick. And we have the competing train, or rather the complimentary train, I should say, on the other side, with nobody on. Oh, there you are. Hello, ma'am. I don't think I've seen your char your character before. You're a little pixelated up close, but you are a lovely lady. You're very, look at those shoes. Very, very lovely lady. One thing that is modeled very well on this route are the ladies. And I don't say that in a vain fashion. I mean, the men are modeled very nicely as well. Some very nice men on this route too. But let's just be honest, I am male. And I, if I say the ladies are lovely, the ladies are lovely. Let's uh, continue on. Look at that, one tenth of a mile from the signal, this train just suddenly lurches into brake mode and still comes to a stop on time. It's just amazing to think that the train is brave enough to lurch in like that. What is that noise? Anyway, for those who forgot, Kidding Park, Kidding Park, Kidding Park, Kidding Park, Kidding Park, yep, this is Kidding Park. There you are. Brakes on this train are being very loud. As you can see, there's our next set of stops on the roof of our train. We are on the roof of a train, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we're heading up to St. George's Cross and beyond. And our 
casters are very happy. N. Button. You can see our arrival time for Shields Road is 13.10.45. Uh, that means we're supposedly about a minute away, which if we're going at about 50 kilometers an hour in a moment, we are... It's going to be an interesting reach, that's for sure. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close. Yeah, technically we're late now. We had to drop to a 35, so nothing we can do about that. Our train is once again making loud noises, which I don't understand. The doors are now open. We have arrived at Shields Road. Can't stand that. Once again, please light here for Scotland Street School Museum. Let's look at the Scotland Street Street School Museum. Let's go through the ceiling. Yep, I don't see the Scotland Street School Museum, so we're just gonna assume that it was not modeled. <laughs> this is why I wish that some stuff was modeled up top, but I guess it would have been like kind of pointless because it kind of ruins the realism to be able to go up there. So West Street Inner is where we're heading now, leaving Shields Road. Let's let the passengers know. Next stop, West Street. I guess the inner wasn't needed, just West Street. And you can assume we're gonna probably see more uh, services as we go along on our journey here. There we are moving, you can see service eight is coming in as well. So we're gonna be meeting up at West Street very very shortly you can see both trains converging in their respective lanes let's actually go back to me there we go we narrowed the 35 so we're gonna get to see both trains coming in again how would you like to see that uh, same shot from the previous scenario no you want a different one okay we'll set that up here we are coming up at the, to the station let's take a quick nice close look here to leave in a moment here as we see both trains still in the station here. I think they're going to get to their time to leave at almost the same moment here. So we're going to go ahead and push N and we're going to get in our cab and get ready to go. And is something wrong over here that I, is causing those to... Um, I'm not sure what's wrong here. I honestly don't know. I keep hearing that noise. Maybe that's what the brakes normally do. I don't know. It just feels like I'm almost breaking the train. And it's automatic, boys and girls. Breaking the train automatically. The best way to break the train. Once again, poking outside here at uh, Bridge Street. Uh, yeah, that's me on a, on a uh, day where I'm very happy. You! 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, what, what's up the stairs here? Let's see. A wall. Excellent. It's going to take me forever to understand how he says that. <laughs> Saint Enoch. So the throttle did get up to 55 there. Now the brakes are kicking in, making sure we don't gain on this 1 in 49 downhill gradient as it smoothed out as I was saying that. 1 in 20 uphill gradient. That is a steep gradient, boys and girls. But this train treats it like it's nothing. Child's play. And now coming uphill once again as we hit a 1 in 20 once again. Very steep gradient. Now we've arrived safe and sound as St. Enoch. So let's take a look outside. That is not exactly where I want to go, but you know what? I'll take it. We have an escalator into a ceiling, ladies and gentlemen. Escalator into, oh, the ceiling, escalator goes. That is quite a view, ladies and gentlemen. Quite a view. I'm just gonna go right back down here and fall through the floor again. There we go. Uh, so we can see that we're going to Calcadens. After Buchanan Street, St. George's Cross, Kelvin Bridge, Hillhead, Kelvin Hall, Patrick. Though that is the next seven stops are on our itinerary. Let's push our auto, auto button and keep going. Buchanan Street, next stop. Let's check on our passengers. Hmm. Oh, hello, sir. So this is more of the uh, you're a passenger with everyone else position. And we're just going to go ahead and chat with this lovely lady she's not even looking at us never mind um, no one over there yeah I don't okay you know what never mind and we're gonna get back to the other side of the cab I don't know why I ended up on the side I was on So we had that 1 in 28 uphill as we came into Buchanan Street. We remain on uphill and we're now coming into apparently being flat again. There is a train coming in once again. Look at that. Doors are open. Let's look at the other train as it arrives and opens its doors. Excellent. Oh, it's for the other side. Doors open on the other side. That's what happened. Doors open over here for that train. So, uh, yeah, this is the one where you have two where you have two platform doors on each side look at that you have the platform doors on the same side for each platform here that is unique and different about this station okay, let's go push the button Next up, here we go so we now have, I believe, seven more stops to go. Because after Partick, I might have said Patrick again earlier. If I did, apologies. It is Partick. Uh, after Partick, we do get back to Govan, and then Govan is where we finish and terminate our service and head back above ground.
look, the star says it's the way out. So let's uh, see if it actually is the way out as we arrive at Cal Cadence. Let's see if this actually is the way out. Ooh. Ooh, I like this. Two escalators and a staircase. Let's see which one leads the right way. None of them. They all lead to the roof. Excellent. It's like we are permanently trapped here. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I wish that the upper ground above ground was modeled at each station and just a little bit surrounding each station. That way there's the whole uh, inclusiveness. So I do wish that was there. It would have added a lot to development time, especially because this is just a spare time project anyway for uh, that turned into a really neat little route that was uh, able to be sold for, uh, I don't think it was about $28.99 Canadian. So not bad compared to, consider it's not a full price route. Um, I, I kind of wish there was some extra modeling above ground, but that is something that I'm sure someone else can work on, add some extra um, graphics to it, and and we're we'll probably going to see stuff on the workshop or maybe even on other sites just modding this route to have all the above ground graphics. It will make the route a lot slower to load and possibly lag in places to run for higher quality graphics, but it would be nice to see the mod of this route with all the graphical stuff over top, with the river going by that, that you pass under twice. It would be neat to have all that. It would be neat to see the Parchix uh, station going through. It would be neat to see the St. Enoch station going through. Uh, though it would have to, again, have custom assets in that case, so it probably wouldn't happen. It would be neat to see just the different railways going through where there is a crossing, uh, where there's a merging area. So it would be neat to see that. Add that to my shop list of things I'd love to see someone do, but it's not something that I would pay for as a separate add-on. It's just something that adds graphical elements. It doesn't do anything to add to the route itself. So I wouldn't obviously pay for something like that. It's just something if someone were to want to do it, I would be happy to show it off. Please let me know if you do something like that. I will show it off. Just to see, just to showcase the work and showcase the things that you're proud of from the work. Oh, we have another one saying it's the way out, but I've already checked that one. It's not a way out. It just, they're all, they're not ways, they're not ways out. Trust me. Uh, we arrived at St. George's Cross. I have not actually been, not been pushing this. Okay, we didn't get a note on St. George's Cross. So there you go. Yeah, I don't think I pushed it for a couple buttons, for a couple stops, so that was okay. I hope the customers knew where they were getting off. I mean, it's on the wall. How can they miss it, right? It's right there on the wall. How can they miss it? some of you saying that some people can't read yes I get it I'm just saying for those who can read how can you miss it We see three stations up ahead, Calvin Hall being the third of them, Hillhead coming up in the middle. I believe Partick is after that. That train came in as I uh, just got into the period it was out of sight. So we're going to watch that train come along. Hello. You're empty. You're not empty. Takes a moment to load. By the way, something of interest that uh, operational interest. Woo, that's not that is not of operational interest. Let's reset, shall we? If we look at the front of my train, it actually does show. Remember, it said I'm service eleven. Let's head to the other train for a moment without soaring past this time. This is service two on the outer line. Hello. Now let me just check something out of curiosity. 
Oh, it actually does say service too. <laughs> okay, he actually did manage to uh, put that in like that. That's nice. Good. Usually when you see a service created in a uh, scenario, it actually automatically goes service one, service two, service three, service four in order for each service. If you don't rename them, they're gonna take those names. So if you can, if you see a series of trains in a scenario and you see one's missing, chances are it was renamed to be your train. That was when that, and that was taken out of the order. So it wasn't deleted, it was just your train. Uh, in that and I've seen that looking through some scenario information recently for some of the custom scenarios on other routes. But in this case, he has number them according to what train number is actually what number is actually at the front of the train. I like that he did that. So uh, kudos to uh, the Alan Thompson of Thompson Interactive for doing that. That's a nice little touch to make sure that was that the service names actually were edited to show the correct number. Very nice touch. I'm going to assume they're accurate to the actual timetable too, but I have no way to know that. So this is an early afternoon service on the timetable. Doors are open. Kelvin Hall, next stop. We're being told about Kelvin Hall. Excellent. Let's look outside. We have an elevator, which, ooh, oh, let's, uh, that's a fire door. This is why it's a fire door, because you're not supposed to go there. So you're not supposed to go in the fire door, ladies and gentlemen. Do not take the fire door. Hey, there's two stairs here. Let's take this stair. You can cross over this stair, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I like it. You can cross over this one. It's like Train Sim World. I like it. Button's not working. There it is. Ah, I see Partrick on the map now. I just saw it before it zoomed out as well. So it's on the map now. We have three stations to go. Kelvin Hall, Partick, and Govan. As we emerge from the tunnel of glory into Kelvin Hall, I see in a light note. We're gonna check it on the other wall. So let's open the doors. It's for a museum. A light here for Kelvin Grove Museum. Well, let's go find this Kelvin Grove Museum, shall we? Zip. Ooh. It is raining out here. I, I don't like this. Let's get underground again. Whoa! <laughs> oh, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that if you go above ground and it's raining, it will rain on your train regardless of where you are. Doesn't matter if you're undercover. It will rain on your train. This is the most unrealistic thing you could expect for right now. Most unrealistic. Oh, that's funny. That is one thing that is kind of buggy in the game that we that is not fixed and I don't think ever will be fixed. Uh, and it adds for some comedic effect. I'm just going to say that. It adds comedic effect. Next stop, Arctic. I want to when the rain started. <laughs> I just want to know when the rain started. Yep, there's still water on the door. Doors are now open. As our train drains itself. I saw another train coming in. Yeah, this train is noticeably drier. This is service number four, as you can see. So let's go all the way. Oh, hello. I didn't mean to come through. I walked through that lady. Where are you on my train? Your technique is interesting, sir. Your technique is very interesting. Indeed, service four. My train is still noticeably wet. 
You wouldn't think, whoops, you wouldn't think so looking from the other side because it looks dry here, doesn't it? Govan. And oops, to get rid of the uh, prompt on the door. The door does open. I'm not in the mood to test what happens if you open the door while you're on service, if it actually stop, if it actually gives you a failure. But given I was not able to shut it one time and I was able to continue, I don't think it does. So you can see we're lined up for depot line one. We are gonna make our way out as soon as we go through that last tunnel after the station. And then we're gonna follow that other little tunnel out. So we're not gonna have a lot of time to go very fast here. In fact, we're probably gonna be forced to leave around 18 by the time we get to that speed. So as soon as we arrive at the station, I'm gonna take the train out of ATO before it tells me anything about it because I'm smart and I know how to do this stuff without being prompted. So our lovely passengers are going to have to alight after we get out of the at the uh, next platform. So let's take one more look at this. Uh, can I see him from the other view? Hello. Yeah, all of you, get out of my train. Why did I end up on this side? So as usual, we're not going to have an auto permit here. The auto permit is now completely off and we're not going to have it anymore. So let's uh, just make sure we have our train set up for returning to the depot by doing that. So the auto drive is now back. Oh, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. I almost screwed. Of course I had to do that. That's the second time I've done that, guys. That's a bit beginner and amateurish. And uh, you know what, guys? I don't think I actually have a game save to work from. I'm going to have to do that again for you. See you in a sec. Leaving Partick, we have one last stop. You can hear that uh, I pushed the thing without moving the mouse. I learned that the P key during that break, I learned that the P key actually modifies that. And there's actually an interesting uh, little thing I did not know about this cab, which I will get to show you in a moment as well. We're gonna go and look at that uh, as we arrive at Govan. So we're gonna be terminating our service at Govan. So now that I have the uh, P button figured out for uh, pushing uh, every time there's an announcement, I can actually make a point of saying it twice. Once as I leave the previous station, a second time as I enter. So I'm going to go ahead and do it again shortly before arriving at Govan. So I think about 500 set will be good because we have a service termination announcement to go with this one. Here we go. So I'm going to turn around. I'm going to go ahead and get the button pushed to open the doors in a second. As we come to a stop, doors are open. I can't turn around all the way, unfortunately. Okay, let's uh, do it this way then. So here I am, and um, hope that doesn't work. Okay, I'm learning how that part works, but we're going to figure it out. Okay, here's the door I'm looking at. Get out of my train. Thank you. Apparently my saloon lights were not on. I don't know why my saloon lights were on. Okay, apparently I turned my saloon lights off by accident during this journey, but now they are, they should be going off anyway. So Y and C also happen to activate the saloon lights, just like that. I must have pushed C by accident at some point during the journey. So we are now terminating our service, and all these people you see on our train are going to be leaving the train now. We need to put our train down. There, they just vanished, just like that. So the train is now in a... Brake setting. We're going to put the throttle into a full setting. Let's get back in the cab to do that. And here we go. Lights go back off and off we go to the depot. As you can see, even though I went into series, I'm not allowed to go past 18 because we're already at an 18 limit. So I'm just going to go ahead and return things to a shunt setting. There's no point putting it any faster than series. 
Dovin is very close to the exit to the yard. The uh, station in the other direction, Ibrox, is a little bit further, so you actually have a little bit of, uh, of a series or parallel driving before you get to the yard, or to the station, as it were. So to leave the area, we're going to have, to get out of the inner line, we have to cross out of the outer line, and we're going to do that probably right up here. So here we're converting ourselves over to the other line. We're now on the outer line. And we're now making our way out. Interesting tidbit about the scenarios that have been made up here as well. All the services in the scenario, you see them once at the station proceeding and then they just stop. So service 10 has been, has been sitting here for delayed for about 25 minutes waiting for me to leave the uh, line right here. It's raining now. We have rain. Let's turn the wipers on, which we don't normally need. It was such a nice afternoon when we left, and now we got the rain. So, uh, yeah, the abandoned subway, you don't have to deal with the rain once you're inside. Now, city you saw there passing by in the right window, by the way, was a stop signal for a shunt movement. So it was a shunting stop signal. Turn off the shunt. I'm going to go ahead and hit the brakes as I get to the start of the depot line area. So right about now. 11 will do for now. I'm going to get a little further in. Now I'm going to hit the brakes. So we're going to go ahead and make sure the reverser is off. Gonna leave the brakes there. Let's make sure the buttons are off. So I'm going to make sure the saloon lights are indeed off. Wipers can go off now. And we need to make sure the parking brake is set. I didn't check the shortcut for the parking brake, but we'll make sure it is set right now. That is no longer a problem. So over to the other cab. And there we go. And you can't see the shunt signal, but we do have a shunt signal if we look outside here. And there it is right there. So you can see it right there. We are good to go. So I didn't, could have gone a little bit further in is what I'm getting here. Let's move over to this side of the cab, turn off the parking brake. I'm going to go ahead and put the reverser into a forward setting. I believe that is the correct one. And off we go into the yard. Since the train will make sure we don't speed, we can just leave it in a shunt setting and we will make our way into the appropriate shed at depot line 14. Note to ourselves, remember tutorial two, we're not gonna proceed to the end of the shed. It's rather interesting as well that we um, have only the one side that we have sheds in, but we've never actually gone over to the other side. So I'm not sure if these sheds are used for something else. Maybe they're for shunting purposes, I don't know. But it seems like these sheds are for full trains. These tr sheds are only for shunting, which is very interesting. These lines, I should say, not sheds. I'm sure we're going to see something about that in an upcoming scenario. We're probably going to see in the shunting scenario what those sheds are exactly used for. Probably for cleaning individual pieces of trains and, uh, you know, putting them back together. If there's a problem with an engine on one, uh, the engine on one of the uh, units, you probably take that unit off, you probably put in the next unit. Through the train wash, I'm gonna slow it down just as I can. Zzz, squeaky clean. I don't feel it's appropriate to rush in at 18 kilometers per hour, so I slowed it down to 10 for the purpose of entry. Our arrival time is supposed to be, uh, you know, 13:38. We're we've been late for the last half of the journey, like with the previous scenarios, so nothing unusual here.
I'm just going to let it come to a halt gently. Notice we have 986 points there. So 14 points will clear us for our top score. I'm not worried about being late in this case. So let's go ahead and look at the trains we finish. We should probably shut things down. Headlights off. I didn't set the parking brake, but you know what? Normally you would. I'll just leave it like this because we're going to be kicked out of the uh, scenario soon anyway. Well done, driver. That was a successful journey. So our journey is complete. We are safe to uh, return to the menu and see how we did. And there you go. You can see that we have the full score here. And let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the next scenario set that we have to look at here over to the career screen. Again, notice there are no achievements. I got my 1,000 points gained. There are no achievements on this DLC, so I now know that. I'm not going to worry about uh, collecting achievements, obviously, because there's nothing to pick up. Uh, unless there's a joint one for the entire DLC, I don't know. Or if the tutorials still have one, I'll have to check them independently. But so far, I've seen nothing to suggest that there is an achievement for this, so I'm not going to worry about it unless I see something. In the meantime, back to the crew screen, as I said, to uh, see the next set of scenarios. So I think for Tuesday, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the shunting shuffle, get this really hard one out of the way. Then we're going to deal with the service disruption. Whoops, up didn't work. We're going to deal with the service disruption uh, where we're going to start an inner circle service from Govan. It looks like we're not going to be doing the entire service, probably again because of, you know, a service disruption. So we're not going to be uh, doing much of that service, but we are going to do some of that service. And that's going to be a fairly simple 25 minute scenario, but that's going to be after our 20 minute shunting shuffle. Now the timing doesn't make sense. The one starts at 13.15. Maybe we'll, we can assume that the uh, that train took off and we just took a really long extended lunch break apparently from uh, 13.35 until uh, 17.45 when this service begins. Either that or we're a different person on the late shift now. Uh, we could also do the outer circle manual mode challenge at 9 in the morning which is similar to the other one except it's in manual mode. And uh, then we already did that one obviously. So what I'm going to do next time is I'm going to do the shunting shuffle and then the service disruption. I think I'm gonna do them as one video. So come back and watch both of those as one video. Make sure to like this video in the meantime, subscribe to the channel. Uh, in the meantime, uh, you can also join the Discord server if you wanna chat in between uh, runs. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get these set up for next time. And if you are watching on the playlist, uh, if you are watching between the day this releases and the following Tuesday, this will not be out yet. In fact, I'm gonna be uh, knowing what's going to be happening in terms of my next upcoming week. It's going to be a challenge getting these out on time and edited and up on the website, but I'm going to do my best to get it done. And uh, I'm going to see if I have that available for Tuesday, in which case uh, the video will start on our playlist in three, two, one.